let's hope this works. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. I am going to manage expectations from the get go. I am currently in a very, very poor reception area. So if I cut off for any reason, I am giving huge apologies right now. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lucy Davis and I'm going to be here tonight with the wonderful partner in crime of mine, Mr. David Mahoney. Um, as you're jumping on, guys, do remember to hit the thumbs up button. If the reception is really bad or if you can't hear me or anything like that, do let me know. In fact, can, every, can somebody make a comment just to let me know that you can hear me okay? Can you hear me? Please. Please do let me know because I'm not at home. I don't have my normal setup on and the reception has gone. <laughs> it's already cut off. Brilliant. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Oh my gosh. Lizzie, we can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, brilliant. If somebody can just make a comment in the chat, because I don't know if, can you, can, thanks. Um, I don't, I know you guys, I've just got a message from Lizzie saying that you can hear me, but I can't see any comments and I don't actually know um, if you really can hear me or if this is cutting out, I am on the road. Like I say, I've got very, very, very bad reception. Um, and I'm not sure that this is going to work. We have all commented. How weird. I can't see any comments. How really odd. Okay. I'm just going to keep going and I will look at the comments afterwards. So, um, Lizzie, if you can just message me if on my phone time, um, so as you guys know, I'm on a secret mission again at the moment. Um, I am in a location until tomorrow. I'm actually leaving here tomorrow evening. So I'm going to be sharing what I've been doing or where we have been. Um, this time around, as you guys know, Mahoney has been with me. We've had the most incredible period of time here. Um, we will be sharing all next Monday, Monday, the 5th of November. We're going to be sharing all on here. I will actually be on a plane though. Monday, the 5th of um, December, even not November, we've been past that date. I will be on a plane to the next location. So we're going to be putting out a pre recorded video. Um, it is pre recorded next week, right? Yeah, we're going to do a pre recorded video. And there is going to be some hot news in that video. So do keep your eyes peeled for the hot news that is coming through. If not that I can see any of your comments, but I think it's time to uh, welcome in, welcome in my favorite. <sighs> Hello. Why have you You're put really me? You're really little. You put me in a tiny seat. <laughs> Let me get a pillow or cushion here. I'll just do that. Here you go. Here you go. Hello, down. everybody. I hope you can hear us well. We're in a really bit of a tight jam now, on as far as signal goes, but we're doing our best to get uh, the broadcast out as we do every Monday. And yeah, as Lucy says, we've had a incredible experience here in this uh, country where we currently are. And we're heading out of here tomorrow. Um, tomorrow evening, we're back in uh, home territory, which we can then disclose exactly what we've been doing. But as Lucy says, next week, we're going to be doing um, a special on where we've been, what we've been doing, the mission we've been on, the mission we've uh, achieved. And then at the end of it, we're going to be sharing some other very, very what was your word? Hot news. You said hot, did you? Smoking, darling. Smoking. <laughs> Smoking hot news. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mahoney, how's things? I'm great, yeah. Very good, Lucy and We've you. We've had fun, haven't we? We've had a, a hell of He's a lot of fun. He's even caught the sun. Look at him. I live in Spain. Glowing. <laughs> I live in Spain, but I rarely go outside in, in sunbathing. But just on the activities here, it, it has been um, quite challenging in the shade so i have picked up a little sun and you are you good I haven't seen, amazing i haven't seen you looking this good for a while look at she's looking great i keep every time i see her she looks like she's about to pop out downstairs and enjoy a cocktail or some sort of a show he he said to me today are you off are you off to a nightclub or something 
Yeah, I'm in a dirty old pair of jeans and a t-shirt. She looks like she's going clubbing, but she's been causing um, a stir. Raised eyebrows from the locals. I've had to run interference quite a few times to fend them off. Everybody wants photos with me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, hang on one second. None of the comments are working, by the way. Uh, what are you looking for? Not necessarily. I had to mute it there because she <laughs> nearly gave away our location. Not necessarily. Yeah. So. They, they, some of these people have followed me for a very long time. Uh, so they would assume it. Okay. So no comments. No, we can't see the comments. There are comments. Lizzie's messaged me to say there's comments, but we right. just can't see them, which is bullshit. Why don't I try to log on to my phone and see if they're coming up on okay, my phone? Cool. Yeah? yeah, just will it create interference? I don't know. Let's, Let's see what happens. So, Lizzie, if you don't mind letting us know if there's interference, Old Mahoney, Old Mahoney is going to be um, checking his YouTube um, to see if we can actually see the comments because it would be quite nice to have a, an engaged conversation with you today. Um, we are going to talk about in a little while. We're going to talk about um, creating your reality. Yeah. Right. So we're going to do a little bit on that. Um, but before we do that. How's your course going, love? <laughs> I knew she'd get round to that. So for those of you that don't remember, I agreed, voluntary, I might add, about a month ago to do... You asked. I asked. I asked. I asked for the pain and torture. I'm a <laughs> glutton for punishment. Uh, I asked to do one of Lucy's courses. It was a bit of a challenge. She said it's an eight-week one. Week number three now. She said, you're going to hate me because this is... This a, 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 very sensitive week, week number three, but so far so good um, because the challenges it faces, it asks you to challenge yourself. You've got to look inwardly for the answers. And um, week three is a specifically um, notable week because you've got to do a lot more work. There's a lot more um, written work. But there's also some very sensitive questions that you've got to ask yourself. And it's most people, I would imagine, if they, this would be the week that they probably quit, you right. think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's what it's designed to do, actually. Just to eliminate to eliminate the week. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a really interesting period of time. And it certainly wasn't planned that we were going to be together during this week where I basically trigger the fuck out of you. Yeah, she fucking has <laughs> as well. Which is brilliant. Um, because actually, there's been a two-week delay to you actually starting the program wasn't there uh yeah only because the coach that i was allocated is in an extremely uh distant it's probably the, the furthest time zone possible so it's challenging it's late night for her early morning uh for me and vice versa and you've been traveling i've been on the road a lot and um but what i've learned now okay guys i won't i won't try to kid you i have an advantage because the other day, I didn't understand something, which is about the ego. And I went to Lucy. I said, would you mind um, explaining this? And um, she did. And that helped so much because I was like, ah, because Lucy knows me very well. And she can say, OK, um, this is how you want to attack that. And why don't you say this? And why don't you say that? Um, we've got to maybe we've had. No, no, it's not, babe. It's no. not. Yeah, it's. Um... What's that? Participants. Put pop out chat. See if that works. Ah! Yay! We got we got the chat. The chat wasn't working, but now it is working. So we just okay. moved that to one side. Um, oh yay! Amazing. Got it. Cool, 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 cool. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, guys, be very, very patient with us tonight because if it's cutting in and out, just know that it's not through any fault of our own. We are in a very odd, odd location right now. Very aren't odd. We? Very odd. Extremely odd. <laughs> and it will uh, um, look at you two like teenagers. <laughs> us, yeah. We are like teenagers. You're absolutely right. It's so cute. Well done, Lizzie. I get I get chilled off because as we're moving around, I make fun of people. You know, you'll see a, a body shape or something. And um, I get told off for, for making fun of people and how they're moving and, and reacting, which is just a bit of trauma. Uh, <laughs> apparently, I'm traumatized by everything. Even waking up in the morning, deciding which shoes to put on is trauma for me. <laughs> 
it's amazing it's amazing so just david openly said that he would go through the program and he would communicate um and he would share his views on the program and the shifts in you has been have been absolutely unbelievable. Like he is a model Amazing. pupil. He, like like he mentioned a second ago, he had a bit of a challenging question or a bit of a challenging um, session with the coach last week, and you were a bit like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And I was like, okay, cool. Like when you're ready to talk about it. So the next morning we spoke about it, didn't we? And we had, you know, um, maybe what 10, 15 minutes, and and I just gave delivered the message in a couple of different ways and it and he was like bing 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 all oh, right okay i've got that now and i was like oh my gosh wow yeah you did a great she did a great job of that and it's not that i didn't want to talk about it it's like when there's a problem my brain is very logical and if i can't fix it i'll say okay i need to step back and just have a little look at it from a different angle and that's what i did because i just wasn't getting it through that attack angle so lucy explained it more and actually understanding this whole thing about your ego is a very interesting concept because the word ego to me means someone's arrogant you know too much money too fast or too much fame and i bump i bump into a lot of these people on my journey and not just so much now but in forever i've been bumping into these ego maniac idiots and um but understanding what the, the ego really is it was like a really big oh i get you and i was under the impression that i didn't like my ego he's the guy that comes out and gets violent and aggressive um, the strike force, the instant, you know, going into flight or fight. And um, there's been a lot of occasions in my life, especially in my past career in Central America, on that task force I was on, where I've had to do that. But now when you understand it, it changes the whole dynamics of this word ego. And it's probably the biggest shock. Um, well, maybe not shock, like snap, you know, like, oh, shit, okay. That I've had so far. So if you are in that mind frame where you feel like you want to go inside and do some inner help work, honestly, and not just saying it because you're sitting next to me. Because I'll beat you if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> She's great at what she does. And, you know, I've actually, we've been traveling and I've been watching a video on the screen. I'm sitting there and she's sitting next to me. And she, I'm saying, oh, and then I ask her. She doesn't actually... Um, remember the entire video she says which video is this you know she doesn't remember no i just channel everything you guys know all i do is that, uh, just bring the information in i create videos you've often asked me if i write read off of a script right mm, she, and i don't no she's great it goes straight off um so now it's getting interesting. I've got some homework to do for my call on Thursday huge a lot and I, I have no idea hopefully i've got about seven to ten hours of airports and flying tomorrow so maybe i'll get most of it done tomorrow if you leave me alone and let, let me crack on with it and stop you saying, when have i never left you alone you, you never you always you're always on me <laughs> really <laughs> she's like, brilliant she is classic get, get the luggage sorted out where are we going next what hotels the hotel no <laughs> see you were supposed to do that <laughs> Give me that one. Is that one mine? Oh, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. The, so, <laughs> crazy woman. <laughs> no, so we've basically had a right laugh. You know, Mahoney's doing his development. I'm doing quite a lot of development as well at the moment in other areas. We won't go into that right now, but I am. I'm, I'm studying a lot myself and putting a lot of effort into a lot of different things. Um, can I just... I've just read a comment. Well said, Mahoney, the ego is not so good. It happens, but it's a learning curve. The ego is actually something that you need to befriend. There are so many people out there that say the ego is no, bad. I Ditch your ego, ego death. And that's exactly what David was saying. And I work on a completely different way to that. Well, it's because we attach the new way of thinking with this, this, this word. I try to come up with a different word for ego. So I gave it another name until I understood it. And now I understand it. So. Ego is a very triggering word, right? It's a very, 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 and that's why I use it. David has in on a couple of occasions said to me, can you just be a little bit less brutal? Can we use a little less harsh language? And I'm like, no, this is how I break through people through. And I'm like, you realize that's your ego. <laughs> it's terrible what she does to me. She's a torture, guys. Aww. Really, I need, I need help. I need a, I, I need you to send. SOS. <laughs> Smoke signals. Please.
from safety. <laughs> She's she's abusing me. She's a bloody slave driver, mate. <laughs> she treats me like I'm her human donkey. Never. With, with all of the luggage, just take that down. You okay. talk rubbish. Take the take the luggage, money. Go on. I'll be. I was like, let me get that for you. I'm like, easy. I tell you what, the exaggeration that's going on in this conversation tonight. It's go we're going to have to open that door up <laughs> to get the no, ego out. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. He's um he's actually doing well. Questions? Any questions there? there? No, not at the moment. They're all just taking the piss out of us. <laughs> <laughs> Standard Monday night. Yeah. Don't you think it's more fun when we do these videos when we're together? Like because we can just have banter and laugh, and you just get to see you just get to see us. Anyway, can I just go back to the point that um the beautiful Julie made around the ego? Because we are all conditioned to believe that it's bad, 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 and we need to um you know, just get rid of it and, it and cut it out of our lives. And it's just not the case at all. When you go through the processes that I have obviously been putting David through and, and all of my clients, but like my clients hate me for this <laughs> so much, you know, they really, really do it at the time that they're going through it. But it is, if you can learn to work with it, and, and this is what I was about to say before um, Mahoney just shared the last little bit that he shared, like I've only been able to create these programs. We're only able to come on and do these videos because we call on the pieces of our ego that says, right, let's bring in the communicator now. Let's bring in that because not there is absolutely not one ounce of your ego that doesn't want you to do well. It just wants to keep you safe. So going back to Julie's point, let's say there has been a situation where Julie may be, and I'm totally making this up because I don't know who Julie is at all. I know who she is. Oh, do you? Who is she? Julie, she's on my shoulders me as well. Okay, so what's her story? Oh, that's <laughs> I'm just going to make up, in fact, I may, I'll, I'll do a story from my side. Okay, so my ego used to tell me, Go and have a lot of fun, spend a lot of time with um, men and whatever, you know, get your needs met, get your attention, but don't get too involved because remember what happened last time. It's absolutely going to hurt you to spend time with somebody. So that's what I believed. And every time I would get close to someone or I would run, I disappear off to a different country, all sorts of different things. And then you get to a point in your life where you have to acknowledge that it's your ego, this separate part of you, but it's a, it's, it is part of you, whereby you can go, hey, hang on a minute, babe, because it's your inner child healing. It's your inner child wounds. It's your shadow. It's all of those things that are coming up that take you, they lead you down um, a different path. Now, Going on to what we're talking about tonight, about creating our reality, if you feed that ego of, oh, my God, I'm going to run away. Oh, my God, all men are bastards. You know, it's very, very important that we actually recognize that that is just trying to keep us safe and it's not the way that we actually need to live. I hope that makes sense. Did that make sense? It does, but it's hard to grasp for a lot of people. So you make it sound very easy. And it's all that's my job. Yeah, you make it sound very easy, but applying it in a daily I like there's something called triggers, right? <laughs> she says you gotta write down all the things that wind you up that make you go, you fucking so we were filming a shot today. It was in front of a very important building, and uh a Spanish couple just walked straight on the set. So I've got the camera set up, we're on mics, sun's like perfect lighting, great shot, right. Lucy doing an interview let's have a chat and his girlfriend just walked straight across the camera like that and I turned around and I looked at him and then the Spanish girl went yeah like that to me they don't expect that red I'm, rag to a bull <laughs> they don't expect me to a speak Spanish and they heard her speaking English and b talk to a, a, a girl like that I said are you that ignorant I, look you can see there's a tripod there and don't give me that hand like that. And she said, you don't own this place. I said, neither do you. But I said, I would have respect for your work. And the, the boyfriend starts going, oh, ha, I'm really sorry. I don't want to get involved with this now. So, you know, women often, um, well, this particular woman was not focused on what's going on around her. You know, she's just, she wants a selfie. She wants a picture. But I reacted. In an aggressive way, she reacted back. And I didn't, you know, I said it back to her in Spanish, and they were both shocked. And um, but I shouldn't have done it. I should have been calmer. Um, I should have reacted in a different way, but it triggered me. I just thought, you know, you're cheeky. And then she's saying, 
the first thing she says instead of saying oh i didn't see it i'm really sorry i said i'm right in the middle of a shot here and then she says you don't own this place i said you fuck and um the problem with that is here's how i thought about the lady i know that they would have had a rough day because of that now because she, the girlfriend would have said to the boyfriend, why didn't you defend me? And he's going to say, well, he's going to make excuses. He didn't defend her because I was, I was much bigger than him. And not that I'm a bully or anything, but if I saw a guy my size, I'd be careful of him. <laughs> I would. And, uh, you know, she would have said, well, you didn't defend me. You know, he talked to me like that. And he would have said, well, listen to the way you talk to him. He was all right with me. Like the boyfriend was okay with me. He's like, oh, I didn't see him. So I was like, that's fine, mate. That's all you need. But his girlfriend triggered off and she kicked off and I kicked back. And uh, it, and I just uh, stood there completely in peace. <laughs> yeah, she just stood there. I was just breathing through it and and we had a chat about it afterwards though, but you got it, didn't you? The lesson yeah. is that I let that trigger me, it upset me. And then I realized, you know what, because of my actions, they're going to have a shit day. And I didn't start that incident, but I could have controlled it better. So... I learned something from that. And this is how it all is, you know, instead of just me answering and just taking a breath and letting her walk out. But then you get into the ego and you say, yeah, but she's going to do it again. She'll be careful now next time. She won't do that again, will she? Because she's learned a lesson. It's not up to us to teach people other less their lesson. This was comes right out of her mouth. I'm like, Ugh. And this <laughs> triggers me again, you see, because every time I try to make it logically feel better for me, she says, not up to you, Mahoney to teach everybody about their lessons in life. And that is a note to all of my fixers out there. Like, honestly, there's been so many situations today in particular where you've tried to step into, and I don't use the word try very often, but you have attempted to um, step into that role of being the fixer. And it is an, it's an emotional trauma response, ladies and gents. Like, please get this. Everything that we do is an emotional trauma response. You know, we're too scared to ask for um, attention. We're too scared to be vulnerable and say to somebody, hey, I just need a hug right now. Instead, what you do is you react and you get angry or, you know, you walk off in a half or you... Uh, whatever, any situations. And, you know, the, the situation with the Spanish girl today was David went to a program in his mind or in his, um, you know, in his in his jukebox of emotions whereby somebody had interrupted something that he had been doing before. He hadn't been seen like that. That was what it was today. Why didn't she see the camera? So at some point in David's life, he has not been seen by somebody that he wanted to be seen by. And he's realized that by having a reaction, it gets the result he wants, which is amazing because we've been able to process that. We've been able to step through that. And obviously, when he meets with his coach next week or later this week, he'll be able to step through that even more. And she'll really be able to break him through because as much as we are talking about it, I've, I'm not getting involved in it. We're too close, aren't we? Yeah, I let me add something there and this is not necessarily a correction i think it's i've done something that's taken me time to set up because that's worked to me when you go on and the filming that i do i have to look at everything i look at the light i look at the position i look where the sun is i do the checks i'll do the sound checks you can't have anything behind it it takes a long time to set the whole thing up just to get the right shot trust me on that yeah <laughs> And then if you've got some mind mindless person who just has no respect for what you're doing, I mean, she didn't know. She was just not watching what was going on. Um, I think that would have been the case rather than me not being heard or seen. That was somebody that's done something in my past that has ruined something that I've taken a long time to set yeah. up. So and and yeah, so there, there's many different avenues to it, but it would have gone, you basically went back to a place whereby that emotional response within your physical vessel would have reminded you of the last time you felt that emotional feeling and you would have had a similar reaction. And this is why we go round in a loop, constant, 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 constant loops, because we don't actually address it. We don't recognize that it's been a trigger. We don't recognize it's our ego. We pretend that it didn't happen. Like we wake up the next morning and we go, oh, you know, we'll just pretend that that argument didn't happen last night. This is where our healing needs to take place. It's time to actually recognize that we're going through this stuff. And there's a lot of people out there in the, what I call the love and light brigade that say, don't worry about it. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, just forget about it. I say, no, grab your fucking journal and speak <laughs> to it like it's your friend or whatever 
You know, it's so important. It's so, so, so important that we get it out of ourselves. If we can get it out of our cells, then we can move forwards with it. OK, now that works differently for every all, all sorts of different people. For myself personally, I journal. David, not so much. Only started. He's only just started, but you're more of a voice note kind of yeah. person, aren't you? Whereas for me, it's extremely, extremely, extremely important that I write it down. You know, and sometimes he'll say to me, like, what the fuck are you writing about, woman? Like, you've been writing in there for hours because I do. But that is where I go with anything that comes up. Anything that comes up, you know, I don't know if my connection is going to re. Um, where, what happened to my phone? It's there. Let me just check. Can you guys still hear us? Can you guys still hear How us? How do you know if it's on or off? I don't know. We'll trust that it's working. Uh, you could do an audio journal instead. Might be, yeah, 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 exactly. Right, so they can still hear because she's messaging. It's obviously just having a bit of a moment, right? Oh, Lizzie's just messaged. All good, beauty. Thanks, Lizzie. Thank you. I appreciate it. Perfect. Okay, so a couple of questions before we move on um, from this subject. So I've come to realise I don't expect myself um, properly. I'll leave it too long to say something and then I'll say it to you like, bluntly or emotionally. So start writing it in your journal immediately and then that will shift. There might be one uh, trauma that is connected to trauma or reaction. That was a question. Yes, you're absolutely right. Could be multiple traumas that are bringing up a reaction. There are multiple things that we have been through that create an emotional trauma response that will then lead us to get angry or to shut down or, you know, because that's my that's my um, my default. It used to be anger, but now I'll just go quiet and I'm like, I need to process. Yeah. And that's just the way that I am. I'll bear witness to that. That's what you do. She, yes. she, she, she says, I just need to process. This. I just need to process. And it takes me a couple of minutes and I'm good. And then she leaves. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> I'm looking over there like expecting me That's to be she going she just, somewhere. She just leaves. I say, where are you going? She says, I just need to process this. And then she come back and she's saying, I don't appreciate being spoken to like that. I said, <laughs> what did I say? You know, it's when you're filming, you rub against it. And I've got um, people around us. I say, Jumping over there. Come on, let's go. We'll just move that here. I'm very quick and very abrupt. It's just bloody rude. It's yeah. just bloody rude sometimes. It's just bloody rude sometimes, aren't you, old boy? Yeah, just a bit abrupt. And then you see that I'll slip into a bit of Geordie and I say, come on, man, what's the matter? Hurry up with you. Yeah, that's the, that's the only I have to deal with most days. Um, thank you, Lucy. My husband seems to be the only one that triggers me. I will, thanks mm. to you, attempt to deal with it better. Might have to do your course. Go and do the five-day breakthrough program, first of all. Um, see how you go with that, because that's just about bringing back into your consciousness as to who you are. £7.77, baby. You've got nothing to lose by doing that. And then if you um, if that doesn't get you where you need to, to just recognize why you've got these emotional trauma responses, book a free 15-minute call with my, my head coach. She's freaking amazing. She'll help you get whatever it is you need to do. <laughs> but... Just want to say something. Don't even go. There. Your head coach. Who's your head coach? Morwenna. I'm Stop. scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I don't know why. She's fucking amazing. I'm scared he's of her. A little bit scared of her. <laughs> and he doesn't know why. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say, when it comes to intimate relationships, of course, that is going to be the most triggering for most of us, particularly us women. We've become extremely hard. We've become extremely closed down. We've, we've stepped into this toxic masculine energy and we've, you know, we haven't, we don't need a man. Like I don't need no man to survive. So it's extremely, extremely important that we actually step into the role whereby we start to communicate effectively. And this is why, you know, I have such an amazing experience with David and I often say to him, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're creating so much healing within me. And he's like, why, what have I done now? And I'm like, you really pissed me off. And I managed to process it like this. And he's like, oh, didn't even realize. You know, sometimes he realizes, obviously. But it's very, very, very important. You know, you have to recognize your intimate relationships are going to be. So I'm talking your mum and dad, obviously you're not intimate with them, but you're very close to them. Your children, they're going to piss you off. They're going to trigger you so much. An intimate partner, that is, I mean, for me, that's the last piece of the puzzle for me. That That's the last healing that I feel I've got to Who's do. Who's going to put up with you? <laughs> Someone very special. He'd have to be special, I tell you. And I'm not talking licking the window special. No, <laughs> you, 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 you. <laughs> I had to say that before you made some outrageous comment about it. You'd have to be very, very special. All right, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> very special. Yeah, move on, move on. So Lucy's five-day course was hard for me. Such simple questions, but hard for me to sit and answer. But it has helped me so much. 
uh, thank you. The course was hard for me, such simple questions, but hard for me to sit and answer, but it has helped me so much. Uh, thank you, Lucy. You're so welcome, babe. It's a game changer. It's £7.77. It's anybody can do it. It's like an hour a day's work. And it is, it's so valuable to get that done, guys. So if you haven't done it, please, please, please just go and sign up for that on my website. Um, it's extremely important that we do this. I see what else we've got going off. I often feel hard done by, not by the fact that my family don't do certain things, the fact that I feel they don't want to help me. Is this normal? Probably not. It is absolutely normal, Lizzie. Again, it's probably, um, and I'm going to make an assumption here, not being seen, not being heard, um, and you're a fixer. So there's a level of control that you, you've got that you're not prepared to let go of. So you expect other people to do exactly the same for you. We've had this conversation before. We have unrealistic and un, um, you know unreasonable expectations on other people by by the way that we treat people you cannot I cannot expect to give David ten thousand pounds and then expect him to give me ten thousand pounds do you get what I mean um I can't he can't expect me to you know give him the earth and then him it's it's one of those things so we expect um from people what we give to people and that's not fair it's not fair like it would be a lovely world that we live in but it's not fair to do that we must recognize that we are living our own paths. And some people you are going to meet and they are designed, they have been put in your life to take the piss out of you. Some people you meet, they have been put in your life because they're going to love you forever. Some people have been put in your life to heal you. That's me. I got magic hands. And see. I've been put in his life to heal him, right? Don't drive me mad. <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. She's, you've done a good job, Lucy. I'm Thanks, very, babe. very appreciative for all the time and effort that you've put into me. <laughs> I am. I am. I'm very appreciative. She's done. I am. I'm very appreciative. She's done some taxi brilliant... for one, ladies and gents. <laughs> taxi for one. Cheeky sod. Um, okay. Right. Should we talk about what we were going to talk about anyway? Which what, is what um, creating your reality. And I think it's a really nice segment on from here because living in this trauma. What? <laughs> The camera's tight. I've got to sit in close. You smell good, but it's good. It's nice. You know? <laughs> Better than these locals have been smelling. I don't think anybody in this in this country where we've been has bought a deodorant ever. <laughs> ever. Stop it. <laughs> Go on. Creating your own reality. Right. So living in these moments of trauma. So let's go back to David's situation that happened today about the um the crosswords, we'll call it, with the Spanish lady. She was a bitch. <laughs> See she just I mean? earned it. No, totally she trauma. wasn't. She wasn't. And she I wasn't. bet if it was a man, she he wouldn't still be sat here in this trauma. A man wouldn't have done it, to be honest. No, uh, probably not. He wouldn't have done it. Probably not. You know, she was just marching across, focused on getting a selfie, climbing all over the place. Anyway. <laughs> in his film set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know he's a flirt, right? You need to, you need to work on your flirting skills. <laughs> Apparently, well, can you send me a course? Have you got a course on that? You want to... There will be one soon. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, news you heard here first <laughs> keep your eyes peeled ladies and gents there's going to be a course all around how Live... to flirt how to flirt <laughs> no, it's you. not going to be about how to flirt but it's about really truly deeply stepping into the love vibration that is coming very very soon um anyway if david had sat in that emotion of being angry that that woman had basically projected onto him earlier today um he would still be in that vibration now. And so what he would be doing is he would be, and, and you've said this yourself, and I love the fact that you've said it yourself, he would then be popping out that energy so he'd be bringing in more experiences of that. Now, you said to me very recently, it's really funny, Lucy, when something goes wrong, it's just bang, 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 lots of things go wrong. And this is a perfect example of it. Mm -hmm. Today? Only one. No, today only one thing because you dealt with it on the spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So but I'll, normally, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I got you. So things escalate. You see, this is what I've noticed. If there's one situation and you over, you over react on it, it'll escalate, and it'll escalate, and it'll escalate. But then you so. bring in more experiences of the same to give you more opportunities to heal. And this is the bit of the memo that most people are missing. You know, if you are going to sit in a space of anger, you are going to get more angry experiences. So let's say, did you want to say something? No, okay. I'm trying to fight off a Were yawn. Which yeah. 
Yeah, all of a sudden I Am was... Am I boring you? No, no, a sweeping yawn came over me. <laughs> He's transmuting energies for us. That's what that's what you're doing. You're transmuting energies no, for I'll us. transmute Thanks. something in a minute. You don't hurry up and get this over <laughs> with. I've got things to do. <laughs> Sorry, if I interrupted you again. Come on. Let's go. See, I'm so, winding up trauma. So basically, you know, <laughs> let's say um, we're driving along in our car and somebody overtakes us, cuts us up, and then the next thing we're like, ah, dickhead, slamming our horn on. What are you doing? You could have caused an accident. Then what happens is you calm down eventually, and then later on that day you think, what a dickhead. Like, who on earth did he think he was? Like, what? He could have killed me doing that. And then what will happen is the anger that you created by beeping your horn and giving him the finger and the birdie and shouting out the window at him, what will happen a little bit later is that you will bring an experience in for you to be able to heal that situation again. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to show up with another person in a car. It might show up in the supermarket when you're pushing your trolley along and someone whacks into your trolley and you go, fucking hell, what's with people today? Rather than going, okay, I'm holding on to the anger from that first incident earlier today. I need to get rid of that. I need to transmute that. I need to see where that anger uh, response came from within my emotional trauma log so that I stop creating it. And this is why today, because instantly, 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 you said, oh, I know I could have dealt with that better. So we were able to talk about it and you were able to process it. This is the best bit about having a coach on tap, like literally. How much to hire you full time? <laughs> <laughs> How much you could afford me? <laughs> All I'm going to do is keep her in travel arrangements, though. You'd be, you know, we could create missions. We can go. So yeah, dealing with it instantly really helped me um, release it. Although I still feel bad. So this is the next part of that. Maybe we could attack that. I still feel bad for ruining that couple's day because they were I don't know what they're doing on vacation or whatever. But I'm, I guarantee they would have had a shit day. So I feel bad because it was my fault for doing that. And I wish I could go back and fix it. But I can't. Sorry. So You talk... just scratched me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Trauma. <laughs> talk about how to deal with that next part, the guilt part. Not being able to go back and fix the situation, having to move on in your life and accept it. Oh, God, I wish I could go back and see that, that couple and say, sorry, girl. you know. Get married, you too. I love you. Get, get married. <laughs> Watch the trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Get married. So just going going on to that that next bit then is the internal um, the internal guilt that you've got going on, or maybe you do, maybe you don't. It would be exactly the same process, right? Where on earth have I decided that feeling guilty for something that you know that I've done is something that I need to hold on to? Mm -hmm. All right. And so this is where the journal is. David Mahoney. Like it's a really amazing tool. <laughs> well, I haven't come across the journal yet, but it sounds like I've been forced into getting one, isn't it? <laughs> Pressurized. Yeah. Well, so. it's your call, right? You you going to the place because you have made the decision that you guys that this is you, not them. This is your reaction, which means it's your emotional trauma response to what happened. Sometimes it was easier when I was drinking because that would just solve all the problems. You wouldn't give a shit and you'd forget it all. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. No, I'm taking it seriously. I'll start the journal. I've got a ton of work to do before my Thursday call. And I'm looking forward to getting through week number three because I've been told it's, um, what's it, boot camp week. You know, it's the brutal week. What's week number four like? Do you remember? Oh, it's not, is it? It's another horrible one, is it? It's it's an intense week, um, but it, I I feel a lot of a lot of the people that have been through the program said that why did you not manage my expectations for weeks four and five? But I don't I just don't see it like that. He looked really really quite upset by that. Did you guys I, see this look? He was I like, missed I, I missed the word. The client said what about week four and five? That I should have managed their expectations better around week four and five because I think they they were okay. What does that mean? They might trigger you. <laughs> You know, she says words. I'm saying, can you what? Because then you've got to pick these words out, and mix them up. It's like I don't understand sometimes. But anyway, look, you can't expect to do all this work and improve yourself without going through some hardships. Because clearing all this trauma from before, which I've come to realize, you know, she makes fun of this all the time. When I first met her, she asked, she said she deals in trauma. I said, what sort of trauma? In hospitals? What? She said, no, 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 emotional trauma. 
everybody has emotional trauma. I said, oh, I don't. And he said it in front of a room full of people when, when I was on stage with him. And I was like, oh, I love the fact that you've just said that because yeah. now, and now look, seven months down the line. It's because we missed. Nearly I'm, eight months down the line, actually. Misinterpreted the word trauma to be, you know, like, oh, I had some Can't sort of abuse it. or, you know, um, I was beaten as a kid by my parents or, the, you know, they put me in a boarding school and it all went weird. No, it's the trauma of things that you run into exactly like I overreacted in this situation today. Um, they can be small things, you know, some like I tell you another thing. I, I like everything kind of neat and tidy. I was sitting on the airplane the other day and I looked at one of the, the headrests and that one's slightly off on the Velcro. <laughs> and I couldn't help but just fix it because for me, I've still got, I've got that camera eye. I've always got the camera. I said, well, no, that's not, you've got to put that straight down like that. You know, go, <laughs> so trauma again, but it's just the, the way I am. You know, I like things um, smooth. I don't like, I don't like friction. I don't like friction. Can I just answer a couple of the comments on here? So um, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Yesela. Um, Mahoney is actually doing my self-love mastery program. It's on my website, www.lucydavis.com. Um, but by all means, book a 15 minute call with my head coach and see if that is the right program for you, babe. Um, and all the, she can give you all of the information on there. Um, Jay, I love the fact that you've said that because a lot of people come to me and they're like, no way, Lucy, I can't journal because if my husband found it, my mum found it, my partner found it, like whatever. Um, there is a real emotional trauma um, around that. And I'll be honest with you, I actually broke my hand when I was 16 years of age because my mum read something that was very, very private. And I didn't know what to do with my um, anger. So I just punched a wall rather than like losing it at my mum. And I ended up breaking three bones down the side of my hand. Of course, it was with my right hand, which is obviously masculine trauma. I know this now, but I didn't know this back then. But so I get where that trauma response comes from. You know, it was when something is private for you, you know, you really do want to keep it that way. And God forbid if somebody finds it. But at the same time, babe, if this is a tool that is going to help you, I would buy, I would like leave it somewhere where nobody can um, get their hands on it. Or I would buy a lock, uh, like something where you could lock it in if you are, if you are um, that serious about somebody else reading it, you know, I'm very lucky. I leave my journal around you all the time and I leave it around other people because I just know now that it was my trauma that was calling my mum in to actually read that because I was up to mischief. You know, she found out by reading it that I was smoking um, pot and taking drugs. So, you know, you need to figure out what works for you. But for me personally, this is an absolutely invaluable tool. It has completely changed my life. And other than buying the pen and, and the pad of paper, like, it's free it's free a lot of people will say to you oh buy this buy that do this do that like it's free all you need to do is get focused start recognizing your traumas and then going there also the the good thing about your journal is the handwriting so bad nobody can understand <laughs> it <laughs> there is she does she you can write normally the pad here normally but she can also write like <laughs> in a strange angle and i said are you left-handed i thought you were right hand she said no i'm right handed i said well why is the pad all twisted around like that so she's basically writing up like this in that position it's the weirdest thing i've seen i've never seen anybody do that before maybe i was chinese in a past life and, and she can also time. write with a toe so they falling in it right <laughs> like a chimpanzee That's so not true. <laughs> cheeky bugger cheeky bugger uh, there's that one there saying, uh, Mahoney, how can you be sure that you ruined they you ruined their day? I'm not sure. So it's it's a good little point to try and dissolve that guilt, that actually. But but that's the program he's running. That's the whole point. It's his emotional trauma. Oh my god, I've caused damage to somebody. That that is where we need to go. It's very, very important. What we need to do is recognize that any of these responses, because we don't know anything, we're making assumptions. Assumptions are the mother of all fuck ups, as we know. So what we need to be doing is recognizing, ah, oh, that's another trauma response. Right. Where on earth could that have come from? When did I start to feel guilty for speaking my truth? When did I feel guilty for doing X, Y and Z, whatever it is? And again, it it's a very important point. Like every single thing that we're doing is based off of a past um, experience that we've had. You all right there? Yeah, just good. pretty good. We've got another. Good, good. Okay, so we're going to wrap up shortly because there's a couple of things that I need to do before I jump on my next call. <laughs> He's going to get a black eye in a minute, all right? So next time you see him, he'll have a black eye. I don't know which one it I like it. I'm doing something really important. It should be over there journaling. That's what you should be doing. <laughs> no. My followers know that I've got another call 
in an hour. Yeah, you've got a busy Monday, I haven't have, you? Mondays is always, always, always busy for me. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to bring it back to remember whatever you are giving your attention to, you are bringing more of into your life. You are creating your reality. So if you are resisting your husband, if you're not prepared to communicate effectively with him, know that he's not going to communicate effectively with you. You know, it's so important that we recognize this stuff. It's so important that we actually say, this is not happening on my watch anymore. I'm not, I'm just not prepared to do it. Difficult situation though, if you've got a spouse that's not supportive. I have no advice to give you about that. I can't do that. I'm not qualified for that. I think all you can do is just try to, you know, Mr. Commitment phobe over here. Commitment phobe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But the um, you, <laughs> look at this, she's kept you crack yourself up, don't you? That was a right stab in the back, wasn't it? Right? See that? Oh, pull it out. Proper stab in the back. <laughs> she's right, though. <laughs> we have a bloody good crack, though, don't we? You know, Imagine I, being on the road with us, too. <laughs> People want to get in the car with us and say, I want to go where you're going. It's nice. Have fun. Uh, yeah. For me, journaling, I don't have anybody in the house. So I wouldn't be worried about that. But I would be worried if my mates found it. What about trying to write in code or something? You know what I mean? You could create code words for certain things. That would do it as well, wouldn't it? That only you know the codes. Um, call your husband something else. The vacuum cleaner. I don't know. <laughs> that fucking vacuum cleaner. You what know? a first class twat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's just a, a logical solution, you know? Um, I don't know. But what I can tell you, folks, is that what I've done so far has changed a lot of things in me. Yeah. Um, I'm a better uh, person You're a in better general. partner in crime as well. Better partner in crime. He's not boozing all the time, which is lovely. He's which means much more attentive and. It's just too much all the time. Social. So do you want to drink? I don't really want anything to drink, but then you got to sit there and drink water. So, um, I thought you know what? It's just oh. lifestyle. It's just lifestyle. <laughs> Hall of mirrors. It's not exactly. <laughs> it's not. You're not exactly a stranger to a glass of wine. I might add. Also, I'm not drinking on my trip. But it wouldn't have bothered me if you had one anyway on this trip. So anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. Lizzie's saying that signal's breaking up. And to be honest with you, um, I do need to get off and get ready for the next call. So it's been great to have you on. I, you. I love doing these in person. Yeah, well, if we're I sitting really next do. to each other. I really great. do. It feels so good to have him here so that we can have proper banter with you guys. Um, so we will... Oh, signal bad. Okay, guys, we're going to go. Thank you for joining in tonight. Share this with anybody who wants to pay attention to it. We love you. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> End stream. End.